On the left, we show a motion capture sequence. To validate the style parameters learned from this input sequence, we generate a motion with learned style and with the same footprints as the input motion. The synthetic motion, shown on the right, is visually identical to the input motion. Here we visualize the footsteps extracted from the input motion and used as constraints for the new motion. The footstep constraints are either extracted from a captured motion sequence or provided by the user using a simple sketching tool we designed. This tool can also generate footprints for a given step size automatically. To demonstrate the importance of muscle preferences in the passive elements and synthesis of natural motions, we designed the following two experiments. First, we synthesized a motion without considering muscle preferences or passive elements. In the second experiment, we learned the muscle preferences without passive elements. Note that learning the muscle preferences alone produces a motion reasonably close to the input motion. However, without the spring and the damper constantly pulling each joint toward its rest position, the movement appears unnatural and overly loose. We now synthesize a motion on a curved path in the same style as the previous walking sequence. Note that the character now leans her torso into the turn. We can also apply the same style to a sharp turn, where the character leans even further towards the center of rotation. We can also modify the character's skeleton. Here we lock the character's left knee and decrease the range of the joint of the left hip. Here we show a different motion capture sequence of a person walking in a sad style. By changing the footsteps, we can synthesize walking uphill in the same sad style. Since walking uphill requires more effort than walking on a level surface, the character has to lean forward into the ramp and exert more force at each step. Similarly, we can synthesize walking downhill in the sad style. To compensate for the slope, the character straightens her posture. In this motion capture sequence, the actor swings her upper body sideways and walks with a bouncier step. We let the footstep constraints slide at each step to synthesize a skating motion. Despite the significant change in constraints, the resulting motion still exhibits the same style. Our learning algorithm can also learn the different styles across individuals. We first show a mocap sequence of subject B walking on a level surface. Here we show a synthetic motion of subject B walking uphill. Note that the unique shoulder movement of subject B has been exaggerated in the synthetic motion. This walking sequence performed by subject P shows minimum movement of the torso. The same behavior is also found in the synthetic motion. In this example, we use the style parameters learned from running and apply them to walking. The character exhibits a lot of tension in her movements, since the tendons and muscles are stiffer in running. We can also apply different styles to the same motion content. In this video sequence, we let all three characters carry a 3 kg suitcase. As a result, they swing their right arms much less than before. The character also leans to the left to counteract the weight. However, each character has a different strategy to deal with the extra weight. For example, the sad character carries the suitcase in front of her body, while the happy character swings the suitcase back and forth. Our physics-based framework also models the elasticity of the character's shoes. Increasing the elasticity of the shoes results in a bouncier motion. Finally, we show a simple experiment designed to evaluate the predictive power of the model. We first learned the style of a real person walking on a flat surface and synthesized the new motion of that person walking uphill. We also captured that person walking uphill and compared the synthetic motion to the real captured motion as shown here. Similarly, we synthesized a sharp turn from a straight walk and compare it to the real motion. Although the prediction is not exact, our method has accurately predicted the overall dynamic nature of the motion. For comparison, we also generated the motion using a motion warping method that does not model dynamics. Instead, it warps the example motion to the new constraints and uses this motion as initialization in an optimization of the smoothness of the motion subject to footstep constraints. The warped motion does not capture the proper dynamics of the motion.